Hello YouTube viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Camera Tuesday, we're gonna talk about camera market competition. Basically what's happening in the market as a competition in 2021. So let's dive right into it. Now, one absolute reality is that market is shrinking. What does that mean? What does that translate to? That simply means camera industry as a whole is dying. Basically how many new units have been sold? How many new users have been added to a company's roster? That number is going down and it's going down drastically. So basically if uh, they were making 50 million uh, in 2010 they are barely doing five right now so market is shrinking and the primary reason is mobile phones are becoming good you have to understand it this way like if i look at from an engineering point of view from a user's uh, usability point of view ui artist points of view cameras are stuck in 1990s like at this point in time all new dslrs are still not guaranteed to have usb charging why now you may say blah 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 blah, blah voltage and all that jazz but like USB-C is designed to support upwards of 20 volts and there are camera chargers uh, that uh, are running in less power than that so why the heck you have issue with that like a camera a normal 5 volt 2 amp can easily give you 10 watts your camera batteries can easily charge at anything above 7 watts why the heck you are uh, like you know not doing that it's like literally cameras are stuck in 1990s now what does that mean that simply means person even if they buy their first DSLR they look at it they use it and they're like okay this is garbage let me put in uh, basically uh, cupboard and never open it up like think of it this way like how hard is it to do panorama in a dslr versus a mobile phone so fundamentally mobiles are becoming good and if the new technology like liquid lens if it ever pans out the way it can pan out uh, flat out will destroy every camera company flat out the end it, because the potential the physics based potential on that puppy is got here now shrinking market uh, does not mean an uh, industry is gonna die it simply means it will become more expensive for example vinyl records there are still companies that make vinyl records there are still companies that sells their audio into that format but it's idiotically expensive it went from like during mass production the price was the lowest uh, once it becomes the luxury item the price becomes ludicrous example Leica Leica at some point in time was all more or less equivalent to Nikon and things of that nature it was like okay it's just a camera company now it's a luxury masterpiece it's like nothing uh, no work Working camera will ever use this simply because it's too goddamn expensive and if you are a, like a, a person where you are going in dangerous places or some serious location first of all the price of this would be like so uh, problematic for you not only because the price is high the insurance you have to pay on this thing would be also high basically you the price performance ratio is just is a luxury piece now does it have some good view? yeah but like it's not for a working man photographer basically so that is the outcome of this like think of this way what will happen to Nikon uh, if uh, all the camera market starts to shrink to a point where they're like no we will not close down but we also have to keep selling new equipment they will make the equipment price ludicrously high so right now the joke is you know, la lawyers and dentists buy this cameras so it will become lawyers and dentists buy Nikon and many companies have already folded example being samsung samsung was a very big semiconductor manufacturers and it had a good electronic consumer electronic division so they tried to make nx series cameras which was surprisingly good for how early they came out like damn these cameras were good like tangibly good but they, they were like dude mobile phones are like much bigger department let's just close this one jump into mobile phone and olympus recently folded and kodak the granddaddy of everything heck even granddaddy of a digital camera but they also folded so reality is real camera industry is dying mathematically it's dying now let's look at the person who is like in the best position at this point in time canon now the reason for canon success is multiple fold but at this point in time you will see many people say we love canon color sign now again does that truly matter that's up to you first many people who do not go into raw formats do not have color calibrated displays do not calibrate each lenses with their own custom profile i can understand that for uh but for people who do through all those things basically if you are going through raw work process color science does not matter that much you can fine tune it the way you want to uh, but for many people that's like dude I just bought a camera I just want to the photos coming out of it going into my Facebook or Instagram or Twitch to look good in those sort of scenario that's really awesome and uh, Canon and Nikon was very neck and neck but the uh, Canon like kind of leapfrogged it in one critical aspect this is in early 2010s uh, the aspect was video autofocus basically I'm talking even before dual pixel autofocus contrast detect itself they were much ahead of Nikon Nikon was not taking it seriously while Canon was pushing the boundaries and reaching a point where they're like no we're gonna give you full HD which was a very big deal back, back then be mindful that was the same camera uh, basically resolution used by Star Wars 
So be mindful. Star Wars pick was a short and full HD. So saying full HD on a DSLR was like, whoa, 10 minute limits. Nobody cared. At that point in time, it can it do actual, uh, you know, full HD on that giant sensor. Everybody was like, shut up and take my money. So Canon took video very seriously and it yielded them lots of money. And their video autofocus was like, it was good to like damn good when dual pixel happened. So flat out, they reached a point where they are making a cinema lineup with all the technology. And they also have a very respected cinema lineup. Their whole C series lineup is respected. There are a lot of documentary filmmakers that utilize the indie filmmakers that use that they're not as big as like Hollywood budget where they're like uh, uh, Hollywood is independent because they have generally their RE their reds their own equipments and all the Panavision cameras and all that jazz but uh, for general purpose uh, Seek series cameras are very popular now what does this all mean this simply means they have one ace up their sleeve which is largest market lens share now this was the biggest gamble they took when they were a very small company compared to Nikon and what they did is they created a new lens mount which everybody hated because your all your own lens become garbage after that but they did what we call drive by wire basically all EF lenses uh, when it was created with that primary mount it was designed such a way that all the communication will happen electrically so every motor that is in the lens will only receive electrical impulse they won't Will not be mechanically driven how you can easily see that in Nikon lens take any Nikon lens uh, Nikon lenses and you will see there is a lever there you move it and it controls the aperture that's mechanical coupling that's really bad so fundamentally Canon jumped into the system way too early made drive by wire and Nikon did it now with a Z mount so that was a very big gamble and why is that a you know success thing well simply because look at the black magic cameras they can use Sony's battery but they will still use Canon's uh, basically lens why simple largest market penetration and why it's a like self-fulfilling prophecy uh, you made a lens that is can easily be converted to any other mount micro four third and or any other company including sony like uh, that was a, like a joke in early 2010s and 2015s is like you know people will buy in the future sony's camera body and they will use a, a metabones adapter with her canon lenses canon was making good lenses because their lens became so ubiquitous every tom dick and harry was buying it so people started investing in the lens without thinking about it. it's like dude i'm doing this le uh, lens system and i'm utilizing my dslr as a video camera and when i'm like comfortable enough and i have a lot of lenses i can jump to their c-series lineup so they created a place where they're like they are absolute at this point in time me making this video they're solid they're like nothing bad can happen to them however it does not mean they are not messing up or they are slowly losing their mind now of course this uh, dam filled up over decades it will take time to drain but it can drain now one thing that uh, really started to piss off a lot of customers in early 2010s is that there are arbitrary limitations is that they're just like let's f the customer so that is fundamentally bad to give you an example there is a law in european union that was like dude if you charge uh, basically if you uh, record video for longer than 30 minutes i will classify the camera as a video camera and then the tax bracket will be higher so think of this with the old, older tax bracket would be five percent the new tax bracket would be 15 percent because of the video camera more professional or blah 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 so those rule was there that's why only camera that is very popular and that did not had uh, that 30 minute limit was gh5 and they paid for it directly it's like okay we'll charge up more for that camera or reduce our profit margin for that camera so we can give you that feature fair enough now that law was changed a few years ago and the moment that law changed almost all camera companies like okay we're gonna remove the 30 minute recording limit canon is like if i did that why would anybody would buy my c camera because my c camera has only one feature is that it can record for longer so fundamentally they are messing up the people is like uh dude uh canon rp i will buy right now canon rp simply because i have the same battery that it will have, and also have lenses for it i will gladly buy that and i don't need 4k give me proper full hd i'm happy with it but don't give me that 30 minute recording limit and i can understand that why did not old cameras uh, had that limit because like i'm old enough where i knew that cameras had 10 minute limit because the 4gb file size limitation i am old enough for that but like 30 minute limit that should not be there anymore and they're like no we cannot actually give you that because if we did who will buy our c-series so like our c-series that cost thousands of dollars uh the only reason to buy them is like it has a longer recording it's like why those arbitrary limitations is not only limited to camera, uh, basically it's the software things, they were also limited to much more peaceful thing. Basically they were pissing you off. It's like, we're not gonna give you 24 frame per second. My old camera, Canon 800D that I'm using right now had 24 frame per second, but newer cameras will not have that. It's like, why? who came up with that thing? It's like this pissing off people also went into lens. 
for example i bought this uh, ef72 300 now it was mark 2 and all that jazz and everything is awesome uh, kind of that it is really good lens no denying that but i really want to bitch slap the engineer basically i don't think it's the engineer's fault i'm pretty sure it's a product manager it's like let's put a oled screen on that now it's 100 percent useless but okay you know new uh, bell sensor stick now it uh, every telephoto lens needs a good hood flat out it's non-negotiable you need to have a good lens hood now if you're like okay if the lens hood did not came with the box i will buy the old ge generations one because the diameter exactly the same awesome canon is like no 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 keep the diameter same change the mount and uh, i bought it from uh, canon's proper shop uh, in bangalore and they did not have the uh, lens hood as like i had to buy third party cheap lenses like who came up with the idea that lens hood is le less important than a freaking OLED? it's like i, I really want to have a you know face to face with uh, that kind of individual that had this kind of idea now i'm like this is a minor complaint no point is these sort of things started to pile up it's like from their uh, lens from their arbitrary software limitation to one of the things that really pisses people off is their battery it's like every single camera has a new battery format why it's like you have exact same voltage exact same milliamp power exact same chemistry why the heck you have four batteries that are doing the same thing why it's like let's populate the earth, uh, pollute the earth because you know yeah it's like that's really really peaceful like you will not piss, get pissed off uh, in one day but over time it will piss off even your most loyal customer for example canon is the only company that tampered with the uh, flash mount so you cannot use third party flash or because they removed the ground pin from their cheaper models it's like hey if somebody bought the cheap camera there is a very good chance they will buy cheap flashes which won't be our flash so it's like ha, how do we disable that remove the ground pin so f the customer like they are the only company that did that so this arbitrary limitation over time started to piss off people and i'm talking very early on and this created a market gap for this new champion sony now sony flat out because they are a technological company and they have been known for making some good technology you know you may have heard of playstation or uh, cybershot or uh, sony Ericsson mobile phones or uh, you know compact cassettes so they are known for making technology and they have been known for making it for long enough so when it comes to technology and their semiconductor division is like providing uh, imaging sensor for almost every single mobile company uh, they're big when it comes to technology they're big they're bold they're experienced so they started to create a new interchangeable lens camera lineup that we are talking about now and the speed by the velocity they uh, you know gained in this like we're gonna release one model eh, two model mm, okay i can see that third model is like damn it's like the moment a7 III was launched the pricing and the performance at that point in time was like are you serious like can you even do that is it that even legal it was like that far ahead of the car like people are saying oh it's not that good nowadays like, yeah but like when it came out it was like miles ahead nobody could even thought like it was possible like gh5 kind of pricing and having a full frame now again 30 minute limit was still there simply because of tax so they created amazing technology for surprisingly low prices and surprisingly early on so basically right now every company can say like, oh we have autofocus good autofocus i autofocus where did it came from so fundamentally speaking they did a very like aggressively and the moment uh, european tax law was re uh, removed they're like okay we will not have uh, recording level. and they also did this interesting thing where they're like no 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 if you're buying cheapest sony camera like let's say new generation one sony a6100 that also does not have 30 minutes recording level take it and go take it and go and because they are not uh, in a habit of arbitrary crippling their camera they have no recording limit they have proper clean hdmi output that also means a lot of streamers are utilizing them nowadays simply because clean hdmi output surprisingly easy to capture and they were the first company to properly introduce usb charging i'm like thank you it's like why the heck usb charging is not a standard thing so fundamentally their market grab and the fact that canon was pissing on their own customer created a void and they, sony jumped into it now does that uh, mean sony is awesome sony is going to take care of the world uh, no they have one side effect right now is that they have too many products and the primary culprit of their product uh, stack is a apsc sensor they have to close it down flat out they have to kill that system otherwise it will simply not work out because mobile phones are already there they are like almost touching it and uh, full frame can only work amazingly if it's priced enough where it's like people can buy it if it's like no no a, a full frame is better sony full frame is better yeah you just can't buy that nobody's gonna talk about it so fundamentally that creates a complicated system. and they have way too many goddamn models it's like what's the difference between a7s3 versus uh, fx3 it does not even like fx3 has time code input it's like who came up with this and then they have fx5 fx9 is like it's like a little little thing they are doing basically how bad uh, samsung m series mobile phone is it's like they are doing the same thing with camera this is really bad 
and they have ego now again being a japanese company they are known for their ego they will go to bankrupt rather before listening to the customer uh, look into betamax if you want to understand that so reality is the only one time i saw them where a7 s3 was designed i think some engineer got into there and product manager was like you shall not interfere with this so they made an amazing camera think of it this way like a7 s3 every tom dick and harry when it came was like whoa and after it was launched it was like out of stock most of the place simply because it was selling out that quickly it's like how the heck a 12 megapixel can do that in 2020 simply because they listened to the goddamn customer customer was like hey can you give me full size hdmi cable so i do not break my goddamn cable every time there you go it's like there was nothing amazing about this camera it's just like oh let's listen to the customer let's not f the customer let's listen to the customer but it's their ego so they are like if we made it this amazing a1 we have to cripple it man we have to we can't just like you know our ways man old ways man we should die with old ways let's add a you know freaking a limited camera it's like it has 8k why the heck it does not have flip screen you already figured out the engineering of that it's like why don't but you get the point like they, they also have some limitation Pro messy product stack and ego that has their very serious limitation and because of the product stack the a7c is not as priced as canon rp there should be the similar pricing and at that point rp would be a no-go but they are not simply by buy because they have a6600 which does not even make sense although they're in terms of uh, canon's battery management versus their battery management it's like you can have a complete you can have r you can have a9 you can have s3 you can have a uh, normal mark 3 all have the same battery that's amazing that means if you have a crew of people working utilizing sony camera all their batteries could be uniformly charged and you can easily swap between them if you hey like that photographer ran out of the battery choose that or you may have a scenario hey this charger broke you have a different charger or this battery malfunction you have a different battery that's amazing that's like that's a little thing that matters a lot when you're running a crew so Sony is doing quite amazing things, just that they have to let go of their ego. They have to just, just let that ego go and clear out the product stack. Now let's talk about two uh, underdogs, Fujifilm and Panasonic. Now Fujifilm makes great APS-C camera. The primary reason for that is even though Sony, Canon and Nikon all three make APS-C, the reason why Fuji is cl classified as the greatest is simply because Fuji does not have to deal with what we call uh, conflict of interest. Basically, they make amazing full uh, APS-C camera, nothing else. It's just like take it and leave. There is no who high in that. So fundamentally speaking, they can make amazing. Now, uh, the early years why Fuji made this decision is like the same reason Micro Four Third was created. It was like at the early 2000s, it was assumed that semiconductor manufacturing is very complicated industry. Absolutely true. But it will translate to making large wafers of semiconductor that is utilized in making sensors would be idiotically more expensive. Basically, waste on that process would be too high. So making a full frame sensor would cost you eight times uh, more than making a micro fourth one. Even though surface area is not it's simply because of imperfection and wastage and complexity and all that jazz. So people made that decision, do, took a gamble, it's like APS-C should be created and it will make it into a format because in future we will never be able to afford full frame sensor. But that failed out simply because our improvements were so goddamn ahead. That's why like you can have full frame camera that cost same as Canon ATD. So fundamentally speaking, APS-C was always a like, you know, the proposition was not there. But again, many people like Fujifilm simply because of the out of the camera experiences like you know give me the photo that came out of the camera without me going into lightroom or whatever have you just give me the camera many people will like that and many times people want something light something compact something more unique because canon and nikon they literally look dicto copy of each other and they are dicto copy. like you can literally make a, a 3d model of that remove all the branding and people will be confused between those two so many people like fujifilm simply because of that and it's light compact it has a unique signature people will pay for that like people pay for iphone they can pay for fuji so fundamentally many people utilize this system however their market share is low and that creates a vicious cycle where their fx up lineup uh, does not have enough lenses where you will be like hmm i want this lens or that lens or some unique lens combination you may not find them and third party lenses would be idiotically rare to find in india good luck with that so that's an issue and then come with, it's not a big issue for Fujifilm simply because they realized this very early on and they started to work on their GFX lineup. Now GFX is medium format. Now be mindful there is no such thing as medium format. Medium format is like a medium zone. So what does that mean? That simply means you take a 35mm 30, full frame camera and you go up to one uh, foot camera. Yes, one foot camera, large format camera and anything below that is a uh, medium format. That's why it's a zone and that's why you will look at phase one uh, image sensor that is medium format that's different size than Fujifilm. You will look at uh, other camera company that means let's say red camera uh, let's say re uh, medium format all of them are different millimeter rating simply because there is no concrete like full frame 35 millimeter film that happened because of that film system so it kind of became a standard throughout the year it's standard is like you know, 100 years old medium format never got that same luxury so like 
even in negative era there were different size of negatives even in the medium format itself so fundamentally uh, they realized that there is a opening in there and they made a camera and because uh, that is only supposed to sell few thousands of these like you're not supposed to sell millions of these, only few thousands of profit on each model is ludicrously high it's like how iphone is only made for 200 dollars and sold for 1000 dollar it's like that so the profit margin on these puppies are idiotically high so it's gonna keep fuji healthy without any issue we don't have to think about that however their uh, fx the aps lineup no longer is justified simply because full frame prices are coming down so drastically and lens limitation low light performance and the fact is most cameras are like literally limited to exact same resolutions like 24 or 26 it's like you do not have one eight megapixel that's really good for let's say a video you do not have a let's say uh, uh, 100 megapixel for really good uh, art kind of series uh, where they have high resolution camera no they don't have uh, product differentiation it's like it's the same thing it's just like spend more money to get more performance it's like it's not like okay this is a different product stack this is a different 8 megapixel is needed for uh, 4k shooting 4k video they do not have that 8 megapixel one like sony did with a7s3 they did not put more megapixels simply because it was a video dedicated equipment so fundamentally their aps lineup do not expect too much out of it however their gfx lineup is going to keep them healthy uh, off float without any issue now panasonic uh, they made amazing uh, micro four third system but the fundamental flaw was always there they assumed the sensor would be the expensive i assume and the sensor will be the hot part which it's not it's the processor that overheats not the sensor so fundamentally speaking that was a losing battle and uh, the moment olympus folded this was like yeah it's done it's done and they were never ever selling enough of it where it was like whoa we are swinging in money it was like that's why you do not see gs6 or gs7 fundamentally it was a dying format and then realized that micro uh, you know panasonic realized that so they are like let's create a lumix branding with full frame now they did try to do that now they had the same problem the sony had is like how the heck you will have lenses so they joined what we call l mount alliance the idea with leica lenses sigma lenses and panasonic these all three company will make bodies and lenses and all will be intercompatible it did not work out fundamentally speaking it did not work out simply because they are already behind schedule and i do not think they had the enough r d budget to uh, research uh, basically sensor with uh, on sensor phase shift techno uh, phase shift uh, basically phase shift detection autofocus system and so they are stuck with contrast detect which at this point in time sony canon and nikon also they have amazing autofocus so like the idea of panasonic being like eh, we our autofocus does you know good for video uh, or you know photos is like dude even mobile phone can do good uh, you know photo focus it's just a video that is a tricky part and if you are charging let's say thousands of dollars multiple times what a mobile phone would be you should be more than a mobile phone so you see that's the point so panasonic i i do not have much hope for that i can easily see them folding in the next three to four years fuji they will survive because of their gfx lineup their fx up it does not make sense because it costs almost same as uh, canon full frame or sony full frame and both of them have much more ecosystem wise where you can buy batteries flashes lenses all that jazz so and again in india it's idiotically priced if you are living abroad you may find hey fuji is not that overpriced but in india it is so this was my presentation on uh, basically camera competition at this point in time 2021 hopefully you have liked it learn from it in that case please click the like button share it amongst your friends that will help me a lot if you didn't like it didn't enjoy it i urge you to press dislike press it twice to show me a as appointment please leave a comment because i do try to reply to all of them subscribe press the bell icon if you're free and as always thanks for watching